AI reshaping our world, changing everything, again. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about how AI is changing everything again. That's right, it's not the first time, and it won't be the last. So let's dive in and see what's new and old in the world of artificial intelligence, the power and presence of AI. First things first, let's talk about the power and presence of AI. We've got these amazing things called generative AI, which include fancy stuff like large language models, LLMs, and image generators. Think of them as super smart programs that can learn from tons of data and create new stuff based on what they've learned. Pretty cool, huh? But hold up, they're not quite like the sci-fi robots you see in movies. Nope, they're more focused and specific. AI isn't new. Now here's a fun fact for you, AI isn't actually new. Yeah, it's been around for a while, quietly doing its thing behind the scenes. Like, did you know it's been helping out with space telescopes and radars? Yep, by using machine learning algorithms, AI helps these bad boys detect tiny, speedy objects in the vastness of space. Early AI implementations. Let's talk about a blast from the past Salesforce's Einstein. This bad boy hit the scene back in 2016, bringing AI to the world of data. You know those nifty recommendations you get on Netflix? Well, Einstein works kind of like that, but for business. It's all about spotting patterns and making sense of heaps of information. Pretty impressive, right? But hold on to your hats because we're going even further back in time. Meet Eliza, the OG AI program that graced the screens of the Commodore 64. Now, Eliza wasn't your typical AI. Nope, she was more like a virtual therapist asking questions and digging into your answers like a seasoned psychologist. Historical context of AI. The history of AI goes way back, my friends. We're talking decades of research and innovation. Back in 1943, Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts laid down the mathematical foundations for neural networks, the building blocks of modern AI. And remember Frank Rosenblatt? He rocked the AI scene in 1957 with his Perceptron, a brainy little machine that could recognize images. But wait, there's more. Fast forward to the 1980s, and you'll find articles discussing neural networks that sound eerily similar to the AI we have today. Real-world applications. Now let's talk about the pre-2020 era. Back then, AI was mainly seen in games, where you'd go head-to-head -head with computer opponents. But fast forward to today, and AI has spread its wings far beyond the gaming world. Now, it's getting its hands dirty in the world of coding, helping out with PhD research, and even diving into the depths of YouTube video analysis. Crazy, right? Take coding, for example. PhD students are tapping into the power of AI to streamline their research and development processes. It's like having a super smart assistant by your side, helping you write better code and solve complex problems. And speaking of YouTube, AI is revolutionizing the way we find and consume content. From recommending videos based on your interests to analyzing trends and patterns, AI is the driving force behind the platform's success. Ethical concerns and data usage. But hold up, it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the world of AI. Nope, there are some serious ethical concerns we need to address. You see, generative AI relies heavily on massive amounts of data, and a lot of that data comes from us, humans. Think writings, art, music, you name it. And while AI can churn out some pretty impressive stuff, it's raising some eyebrows about the future of human creativity. Will AI replace human creators? And what about compensation for all that hard work? It's a tricky situation, to say the least. Take OpenAI, for instance. They've been in the spotlight for profiting off of content created by others without proper compensation or acknowledgement impact on creators. OpenAI has got this transcription program that's basically capturing every sound on the internet. Yeah, you heard me right, every sound. And you know what that means? It's affecting YouTubers and creators in a big way. Imagine having your content snagged without your consent. Not cool, right? And speaking of consent, let's talk about Marques Brownlee, aka MKBHD. Now this guy's known for his epic tech reviews, but did you know his work was used to build a product recommendation tool without his say-so? Not cool. Not cool at all. Sudden accessibility and public concerns. But wait, there's more. The sudden accessibility of AI has turned it into a consumer product for everyone. Gone are the days when it was just a fancy toy for research computers. Now, AI is everywhere, from social media to smartphone apps. And here's the scary fact, 
companies are kind of sweeping the whole human labor thing under the rug. They're making it seem like AI is this magical thing that works all by itself. But the truth is, there's a whole bunch of people behind the scenes making it happen. Human labor and AI. Let's talk about Kenyan workers, for example. They're out there reviewing graphic content to train AI to not reproduce it. And you want to know how much they're making? Less than $1.2 an hour. Yeah, you heard me right. Less than $1.2. And it's not just Kenya. Amazon's Just Walk Out shopping system relied on over a thousand workers from India to keep things accurate. The black box problem. But here's the real problem, black box. You see, the internal workings of neural networks are still a bit of a mystery. We're talking about algorithms that even the experts don't fully understand. This opacity makes it super tricky to ensure that AI is working properly and doesn't have any biases. And speaking of biases, algorithms that determine the riskiness of humans have been around since 2001. Yeah, it's a real thing. Just look at the offender assessment system in England and Wales. The pace of AI advancements. Let's discuss the pace of AI innovations. I mean, seriously, have you seen how fast things are changing? Companies are throwing everything they've got into AI, branding themselves as AI first, and rolling out new features left and right. Take Shy Kids, for example. These Toronto-based geniuses used a video-generating model called Sora for their short film Airhead. But get this, the ratio of footage generated to what made it into the final cut was about 300. One, the optimistic side of AI. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom in the world of AI. Nope, there's a bright side too. Despite all the ethical concerns, AI has tons of positive applications. Just think about it. AI tools can automate boring tasks, speed up discoveries, and even help us create new drugs and better battery chemistries. And that's just scratching the surface. From dubbing videos in multiple languages to improving video production processes, the possibilities are endless. Challenges and solutions in AI. But here's the thing. For all its greatness, AI is still pretty reliant on us humans. I'm talking about the massive amounts of resources it guzzles up. Electricity, water for cooling, space for data centers, you name it. In fact, in 2022, Google, Microsoft, and Meta withdrew about 2.2 billion cubic meters of water. So where do we go from here? Well, first things first, we need to hold tech companies accountable for how they handle training data, and we've got to be prepared for where this technology is heading. Sure, AI and machine learning might not be new, but these new AI tools, they're already changing our world faster than we can keep up. So whether it's changing our relationship to social media, advocating for regulation, or supporting human creators, we've got some serious thinking to do. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more exciting content. And remember, AI is always evolving. Until next time, take care and keep exploring.